hater. Because whether you like them, woo, or you don't, they are the best thing, woo, in the football world today. Woo! Welcome back, Gator Nation. It feels so good to be 1-0, coming off a classic in the swamp. Easily one of our better wins, or our banner wins, excuse me, and absolutely the best home opener that we've had in decades. Florida took care of business against a disciplined and physical Utah team, and we went blow for blow for with them for four quarters. What an absolute classic in the swamp. I'm, uh, I mean, couldn't be happier with that. Am I right, guys? Absolutely. It it was uh it was awesome. We we saw what we thought would happen. Um, Anthony Richardson was who we thought he was, and and give Utah credit. Utah was who we thought Utah would be. Uh, they we both teams <clears throat> bullied the opposing defensive line. Um, so but it, it, we prevailed. It was it was a good week. Yeah, great weekend. Uh, Mrs. Dickey and I were talking about how good it felt to be on the uh, winning side of of a one score game for once, and further, it felt good to be on the winning side of a or or it felt good to be there for a game that was, uh, you know, it wasn't like Felipe Frank's the heave to cleave the Callaway yeah. game. It was. Like it felt like we des- we actually played well and deserved to win. We didn't just steal one. Um, or we, I guess you could say we stole one a little bit, but it, we we deserved to be there, and it was uh, felt much better. felt felt like an organized football game instead of just some some people screwing around and getting lucky at the end. Yeah, there wasn't any fuck shit going on. Like we played good, played good, played a good team, good, and you know, at the end of the day, it. It, uh, it worked out for us. I mean, how many times have we been sitting here, Alabama last year, LSU countless times, where it comes down to the wire and, you know, shit hits the fan. Les Miles calls a stupid over-the-head, you know, fake kick, obviously, on a fourth down and we lose or, you know, whatever. Amory Jones, you know, falls down with the snap and – we end up losing, but not this time. This was, uh, it was, I mean, the most electric game in recent memory, especially what, the most electric win in recent memory, for sure. For sure. Yeah, it, it, the difference between this one and the, those Tennessee games is that um, you especially the one with Franks, I mean, you felt like it was uh, the heave to cleave. It was just a, a bandaid on what was yet to come, you know, like we, we knew that wasn't sustainable. Um, we weren't beating the best Tennessee teams and it was, and we needed all the luck in the world to beat the, one of the, the worst, uh, or just not a very good Tennessee team that year. And this, this is different because you can say what you want about Utah. I like, I, I love how everyone, um, the haters are saying, oh, well, Utah was overrated or, or they were ranked right. too high. Um, however, th- this is still the team that everyone uh, – or they're like, oh, they they just had a lot of offseason hype at, like UNC did last year. And, and the difference is UNC didn't prove anything. Utah went to the Rose Bowl last year, beat the dog shit out of Oregon two times, gave Ohio State everything they could handle. They returned like 90% of their production and – and the so, quarterback, and the quarterback, the running back, um, their leading tight end, uh, or two of their, they had two really good tight ends, um, eight they, starters on defense, and people are acting like, oh, they're they're overhyped. I would get if it was they, you know, let's say last year they went seven and five, played close teams, and they're like, oh, they're returning everybody though. They played close. I think they're going to have a breakthrough year. No, this is a team that went won ten games last year, won the Pac twelve title. Granted, we can say what we want about the Pac-12, um, and, and they they brought back almost everybody, and 
I mean, that, that was a good football team. And they had a, their coach has been there for 18 years. It's not like yep. some guy, it's not like playing McElwain's Gators that got lucky in his first two years or, or Dan Mullins Gators or, or some, you know, I, I remember the first year Brady Hoke was at Michigan. They were pretty damn good. Or same thing with Texas and, and Tom Herman. They had a good year, like in year one or two. It's not like they're, they're getting a fluke season. I mean, this, this motherfucker has been there for 18 years and has, has yeah. had some damn good football teams in those 18 years. Um, so, uh, and we beat a top 10 team. I don't care who, who, you know, they, if they don't end the season in the top 10, fine. Uh, but the week we played them, they were top 10. I still think they are, they're going to win 10 games out in the, on the pack 12. At, at they're least. a good football team. They're a good football team and, and uh, disciplined and well coached. And they came into the swamp and we went blow for blow with them. And um yeah, I was impressed as hell. It wasn't like it wasn't like we were more talented than than them by a long stretch or better coached by a long stretch, but it was just a an even football game and we ended up, you know, playing a little bit better than them at the end. And um obviously all these excuses that everybody's making up on Twitter, the haters are absolutely fucking sick. They really hate that we played good and that we looked good and that we were in the prime time spot and that damn near every four star uh, that we want was there and saw us and saw a swamp that was, I mean, the swamp was fucking rocking that night. It was so cool. I was sitting with Mac and um, yeah, we were, the place was going absolutely bonkers. It didn't seem as full as I've seen it before, but it was certainly loud and the people were, people were, you know, they were loud. It was it was a good time. It was a great atmosphere, and um, uh, the welcome wagon couldn't have been better for Billy Napier. Yeah, and I think that the uh, it, the Utah fans, I think, would be the first people to say like everything that Florida fans say about playing in the swamp is true. That you know there was countless threads on Twitter, fans walking out of the game talking to Florida fans. They're just, I mean credit to their to utah's fans like they traveled well we got there super fucking early um i think and i think we didn't have to stand in line for very long because the entire like however many of them were there in that uh southwest corner of the end zone was just they were in their seats ready to go i don't think i've ever seen the visitor section as full as it was for that game yeah, and you might you might have seen like one or two blue specks in it. It was it was extremely impressive to see, like, the way that they traveled, the respect that those fans had, and then like I was saying that that they would be the first people to stand up and say, yeah, everything that they said about like how loud it gets, how crazy it gets, is all true. Um, you know, fuck those people on that stupid stool show that talk about the swamp isn't that great they can die of gonorrhea and rotten hell for all i care because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about it was just i mean my voice still doesn't really sound 100 percent um i'm still tired still kind of worn out and just like ready to go again uh on saturday um just just super it, it was like i said it was really nice to see competent football played and i feel so assured now that like it isn't like oh man like I don't I, that there was a play in the in the fourth quarter. I think it was like third and four. And I looked at Mrs. Dickey and I said, "This is the game right here. Like we have to convert this." Um, or or it's it third been, and four. Yeah. Oh, you know, because I'm trained over the past few years. It's like we don't get that. We're not going to get the fourth down conversion. Like there's no there's no way we're going to succeed at this. And it's just nice now. I think that I feel like going forward that the team understands how to win, how to put themselves in the position to win. Um, And that is so comforting, such a relief because it's like, I don't have to worry if we're down, we can go score. We can go, we can impose our will if we want to. And that is a really nice feeling. I'm just, it's, it's, it's going to be an exciting season. I'm, I'm ready to go. The execution and the physicality was definitely on another level compared to what we've seen in the past. Um, I was telling Mac, I was like, this is a tough Florida team. I don't know that we've seen a Florida team that's, you know, a kind of a gritty, grinded out kind of, you know, you know, run the ball down your throat kind of team. We haven't seen that certainly 
certainly in our lifetime, we've always been, a, you know, a, a finesse kind of pass the ball. I mean, we've had toughness in the past, but not as the identity of the team, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, you got anything else, Mac, or you want to move on to just kind of going through the different, uh, you know, the different... Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, the atmosphere, everything you all have said, I agree with. Uh, I, I think one thing I, I enjoyed the most was uh, seeing the clips after the game and and our, our production team is is great. And I, I said it in our chat that uh, Billy Napier brought over the whole, essentially his whole production staff from um, Louisiana Lafayette. And I watched some of the, their videos about their season last year and they have an incredible production value and they they the reason and the cameras they know where they need to be at all times and they got some of the perfect moments of billy napier and his emotions and you could just see how calm um and collected he was almost the entire game nothing rattled him he didn't get yep. worked up stayed calm um his post game cool. presser yeah he, he 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 said all the right things in his post game presser um that, that's something, I, you know, when I, I go back on it and um, I feel like I know we keep touching on Dan Mullen every now and then and going back and that 2020 season where um, he had a platform to, you know, say, hey, Kyle Trask should be the fucking Heisman front runner right now. He is the best damn quarterback in the country. He's lighting it up. Look what he's doing on to all these teams. And he wouldn't say that he didn't, he, he never said it once, never got up on, used his, his voice to, to say, Hey, and, and at the time I was like, well, you know, he's, he's focusing on the team and he's wanting to do this. But I, as time goes on, I think that motherfucker was like, Hey, I'm the reason that this, this team is so good. I'm the reason that Kyle Trask is so good because I'm a genius. I'm an offensive genius. I'm the guy, um, Billy Napier, like he, even if he thinks that he's the smartest guy in the room, he knows how to play the fucking game. He knows that if you want to get the best players in the country, you got to tell them that, man, look how, like every time, every time Kirby Smart has a, has, has a uh, pedestal or has a uh, stump to, to make a speech on, it's never him saying, Hey, we out, you know, we out coached him or our coaching was great today. It's always like, we recruit and we have the best players in the country. And that's what happens when you have the best players in the country, you win games. And so kids are like, Oh man, this guy thinks, you know, if I play for him, he thinks I'm one of the best players in the country and he's going to give me all the credit in the world. Billy Napier says, Oh yeah, that Anthony Richardson is pretty darn good. Isn't he, you know, or, or whatever he says. And so he knows how to play the fucking game. And it's refreshing to see that. Uh, someone to swallow their own pride and and realize that I gave all the credit to the players. They're yeah. the ones playing the game. There was a he when he was talking about that just absolutely electric two point conversion. He even said like, yeah, his athleticism bailed out a poor play call. Yeah, and you know, and it's like you catch. There's not a whole lot of coaches you you could catch saying that, but I don't think that it's so much. I I really don't believe that it's him playing a game I think this guy really is just this is who he is you go back to like when he was on fine bomb after he had gotten hired and, and he was like you know oh you know we we appreciate you having us on here it was never I you know it was never me it never I it's always and that mm -hmm. it, it, it's in everything that they do it's it's a common thread it's about us it's the community it's the common good the good of the team all those different things it's just everything. It's just all of it is so refreshing. Yeah, I I agree. Or, and I wasn't saying that you know I I think he is playing the game, or that I don't I don't not think he's being genuine when he says it. But he knows that even if he truly believes it, he's he knows that mm -hmm. anytime I'm in front of a camera, I need Lather to be making I need to be making pitches for the University of Florida because. I, that's free recruiting right there. I mean, that you can't, you only get X amount of minutes and phone calls a, a week or, you know, in the recruiting realm. So it's stupid not to use any TV time to your advantage. Yeah. It's recruiting season. Yeah, it, it sure is. Um, well, let's go down the list and talk about kind of how the different aspects of the game went. Obviously the, the star of the show was Anthony Richardson. 
put on a absolutely marvelous performance. Um, the two point conversion, three running touchdowns, uh, threw for what was it like one one ninety something like that. One sixty eight. Uh, 168 uh yeah he, he was definitely the star of the show um god it was so cool seeing how uh they were using him you know a lot of play action a lot of naked bootlegs uh, a lot of levels concepts for the receivers and um you know he just i mean he just played excellent i don't even know what more to what more to say about it he kept his composure and um he, he said in his press conference that Billy just kind of gave him the ball, told him to go win the damn game, go, go win the fucking football game. And uh, he did. He, he rose to the occasion several times. So, I, I mean, it's, it's hard to, to even knock his performance at all, uh, minus that, you know, almost interception in, I think it was the third quarter. But, um, yeah, the decision-making, everything looked good to me. Yeah, and I think I think for one of the, so a couple of things I've seen people talk about, some things I noticed was that he he missed a few reads and his athleticism sort of bailed him out. And I think I think one of the, and, and again, it's just like everything being so refreshing is that it doesn't feel like that will be a lingering problem because you know everybody's like, and we'll we'll talk about Kentucky you know later on, but everybody's like, oh, well, they're going to, they've won that game. It's good for us. They're going to be, they're going to be asleep. They're going to overlook us. And it's like the first thing Napier said in his press conference was like, listen, the film is sloppy. We got a lot to work on and keeping everybody grounded. And it's good to know that it's like, I, I know I don't have to tell Anthony Richardson that there's things he needs to improve on. He's smart enough to realize that. And I think he's humble enough to realize that. But, you know, of course there are some things like some throws, just timing on throws a couple times where it was like, well, that's going to get picked and then it didn't and i don't know if that was maybe my vantage point from the corner of the south end zone or um him being bailed out by the the defense that that utah was playing or like some of the receiver i mean because pierce hall is, was really good despite the mm-hmm. fact they didn't throw a whole lot but um those things obviously you want to see those things improve and if if they do good good gods Who's going to stop us? Sky's the limit. Ten and two is the floor. Um, yeah, it, it, he said Anthony Richardson will be the f- uh, most critical person of Anthony Richardson, or something mm-hmm. like that. Like he'll, he's he he's his own biggest credit. Yeah, critic. yeah, yeah. That's what he said, um, which I think is great. Um, I, I think, I mean, we we really t- said it all. Uh, I I think uh, I he's. He's going to – I think every week he's going to give us one play, one or two plays where it's going to be, <laughs> why did you do that? Yeah. Like that that was dumb or, you know, don't force – don't do that or ever again. He's going to give us one or two of those a week, and then he's going to give us one or two of, you know, to balance it out of, holy shit, how would you do that? Like yeah, the, the two-point conversion. Yeah. And uh, I I think he is, you know – uh, we're going to see some mistakes made by him. Um, I think he's going to be good enough to overcome those. Uh, I, I, and I would hope that we don't see any more forces like he did on that one that should have been picked that thank God wasn't. Um, but still, I think that drive it, next play was third down. I think we punted right after that. So I, I don't think it really, even if we would have turned it over, I think it was 10, seven at that point, or it might've been 13, seven. I can't remember. Um, but I think he's going to give us a couple of those a week. Um, and, and we just got to him being, it's one thing if you're not making Superman plays, like you can, and you make those mistakes, but you kind of tolerate it. you you get, you have a longer leash whenever you can do freakazoid stuff like he can do. And yeah. it's kind of, it's nice now that everyone is, and you know, he's not, he's not soul, you know, he's not proven fully, um, but to Gator fans, he is to Gator fans. Like we, we've been trying to tell everybody like, Hey, this, this guy down here, Anthony Richardson is, you know, probably one of your, you know, he could be in, in uh, New York at the end of the year. And I wouldn't be, I won't, I won't be surprised. I don't think anyone now will be surprised if he is. Um, But I think before the season, no Gator fans would be surprised. Now it's like, we'll be, if we now, other than getting there now, it's starting to like this motherfucker could win, could win it. And now, 
you know, we're going to realize that like a week or two or a month before everyone else does. Uh, but he keeps lighting it up and, and, you know, he didn't have a all world game, but he, he made huge plays in spotlight moments. Like he, it, it's too early in the season to have a Heisman moment. Um, he but if this did the Heisman statue, when he if, broke the DB's ankles on the touchdown run. Oh yeah. If, 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 this, run. if this game was happening in November, and he had a stat, you know, his, his season stats were like 25 touchdowns and 20, you know, rushing touchdowns. And that game just happened. And we beat a top 10 team like that. Um, that would be a Heisman moment. Um, so For this sure. game, this game had the only thing this was that a it, coming out party. Yeah. And the only reason it's not a Heisman moment is just because it's too early in the season. Right. Um, and I, and I put and, the cart before the horse, but if he does win, he has to his statue has to have the pimp cane. For sure. This he had, we our our schedule allows for plenty of opportunities for a Heisman moment. I will I will just say that. So Oh yeah. 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 If we if he if he beats Georgia and Texas A and M, then I mean, you know, anything can happen. And I, I think that uh, <coughs> you know, we're in the fortunate position of prob- probably having the best quarterback versus any any team we play. I think we could pretty safely say that. Uh, at least this, at this point, uh, maybe, um, maybe there will be some some contenders. But uh, Richardson played played like a man last week, and the uh, the basically our season will be fucked if he gets injured, which is a good thing that our O line played so well this past weekend. Uh, specifically, uh, Torrance had a hell of a game. Um, he, he seems to be the kind of the anchor of the offensive line and uh who's who's the who's number 70 is it tarquin yeah tarquin right tackle yep he had a hell of a game too the whole right side of the of the team or of the o-line played good um center played pretty good except for the there were a couple uh i think false starts on the center i think uh snap violations or something of that nature but other than that pretty pretty solid uh that was kingsley Agukwin or Egukon, however you want to say his name. Mm-hmm. Um, King, Kingsley but, and Princely, that's who we got. They uh, they all played great, um, and and it does help. I know there were no sacks from either either team. Uh, we'll touch on that when we talk on our defense. Why they why I think they didn't get any sacks, um, but having the mobility of Anthony Richardson is another. You know, I, I don't think many teams are going to get to him. You're gonna. You're gonna have to uh, get creative with your blitzing, to, um, or you're gonna just have to have a absolute stud of a linebacker spying them that can hawk them down. But I mean, I like Anthony Richardson one on one with anybody. Um, if, if you give him three yards, and it, you know if he can see someone coming from three yards away, I like him one on one. If it's a one on one, I like him versus anybody. Um, so yeah, I, I I'm confident that. I don't think we're. I think we have a good blend. We have a our offensive line. I think is is pretty good, and we have a mobile quarterback. I don't think we're going to give up many sacks because of that um, combined. So I'm uh, I'm excited. Um, I, I think they played well. The run blocking was in, incredible. Yep. Um, I, again, that's having Anthony Richardson at quarterback is going to only help your run game because it's going to make you know you have to count for two guys in the backfield to that can run the ball, not just one. And that's, you know, even if, if we go five wide and you, you leave five guys in the box and you want to cover six with five, I, I mean, that's hat on a hat. I mean, even, even if you go five man up across every, all five wide and uh, you, you leave six guys in the box, uh, you know, here we go again, a, a one-on-one. I like Anthony Richardson versus anyone in a one-on-one scenario so he's faster than most anybody you're gonna see in a front seven in the country yeah so again i think uh his his ability is is playing into our our strengths and is going to help our weaknesses on offense so So let's touch on the running game uh we we saw three running backs i think three maybe maybe a couple more but three main ones we had uh, uh naquan we had Johnson, Montreal Johnson, and we had um, ETN, which was kind of the surprise of the game. I didn't think we would see as much of ETN, just him being a freshman 
and uh, I don't know how many carries he had. Uh, one of y'all can check that, but um, I think he had something yeah. like only four or five. Um, five. He or uh, any any average like thir- or twelve yards a carry or something. Yep, and he was explosive. I mean, encouraging as hell. You know, it, and that, now we kind of realize why maybe Lingard got uh, passed up. Although I don't know if you guys saw after the game, yeah, uh, Lingard hit the weight room. It yep. was like they're they're trying to send me a message, and that goes back to what we were talking about probably the week zero, where it's like you breed that competition, and I think that this coaching staff has instilled that mindset of like it's whatever's best for the team, and if I need to work harder, I need to work harder. There's no quit. Yeah. At least yet. I mean, who knows what will happen, kids transfer or whatever, and you don't hold it against them. But it, right, at least right now, he, you know, like you said, he was in the weight room. It was like after midnight, and he was like, they're sending me a message, and I need to listen. It's pretty badass. Yeah, that's fucking sick. Uh, you admire that. But, uh, but yeah, no, ETN had a hell of a game. Um, uh, he had uh, that fumble, I think it was in the fourth quarter. I think it was on the last drive, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I was yeah, on the last drive, so shit yeah, shit my pants for sure. But um, it was a first down, so can't uh, say that much about it. Uh, Montreal Johnson had that fumble in the first half, but that was more of a good play by the defender than it was a fuck up on his part. So you know, what can you do? I'm sure he got um, you know roasted in practice today for it, but um, wasn't a real ball security issue and. Naquan played played good, uh, you know, blocked a little bit as well. Um, overall, I was really satisfied with the running game, and it opened up just a ton of play action opportunities and opened up the pla- the the pass game, whatever little pass game we had, and um, yeah, was uh, was very encouraging. Yeah, I was several times texting the letters ETN to our friend Bad Take Peyton. Um, he was really high on him and was just excited because he we haven't had that that player that we've got to see play that that we knew was going to be really good. Um, I was kind of bummed that uh, Naquan didn't get the production and, and who knows why, but um, that the production wasn't really there from him. He had he averaged like uh, four yards a carry, a little less than four yards a carry. Um, I mean the team as a whole seven seven point three yards a carry. Um, what what more can you ask for? As at one point, somebody was like, "I don't understand." This kid next to me, um, was like, "They've what 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 was the safety that formation that they were running? The single high or whatever." Yeah, they were single high on all game. And he kept he kept going. They're single high slant slants. He was yelling slant. I was like, "Why? What? <laughs> they yeah. they we literally can do whatever we want running the ball. Why why do we need to do that?" Yeah, that, I, I kind of was the same way. I was like, man, I, I think they have an opportunity to take the, the top off, but they were trying to run the fucking clock down the whole time. You know, it was kind of a, you know, that kind of game. So they might have had an opportunity to, to throw the ball deep, but they didn't really need it. No, I, I don't think, uh, you know, I, I was okay, okay with not – like really trying to stretch the field because we didn't need to. And, and what was what we were doing was working why – you know, I think you're going to see some shots take taken this week more so, yeah. um, because you know let let this week uh, or let last week set some stuff up for for this week it, because you didn't need it. So that's that's my my thought on the yeah. Um, I totally agree. Passing game. All right. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about the defense. Um, the uh, we'll start with the secondary. I thought the secondary. Might have been the best, um, the best group out there. Uh, they, they kept everything in front of them for the majority of the game, and um, they kept the passing game really under control. So I mean, I you know, I liked what I saw. It wasn't like we were, uh, you know, snapping picks and you know flying over the field and smoking people. But the secondary did their job. I mean, you could definitely tell, definitely that. Corey Raymond has made a big difference there uh, compared to last year when we had Grantham. Yeah, I think that was one of the things. Well, I forget what play it was. Oh, it was the wheel route play. And I was like, I was pretty frustrated that it wasn't 
read better. Um, but it was, again, the theme I think of this show is like, it's just refreshing. It's like, what is the refreshing cold as the Rockies beer Coors? Is that the refreshing one? Anyway, whatever. Mm-hmm. It, this whole uh, thing is like an ice cold beer on a summer day because I, you know, that guy, their running back, and they, they had a good running back too, uh, Thomas. But he get, got an open space, and I don't remember which um, DB it was, but it was, you know, like he, he did what he had to do. He stopped, yeah, they got a first down, but he, he stopped the home run and. Um, I think they ended up failing to convert on that drive. Um, or that might've been the one where they ran in and everybody missed the tackle, which was frustrating, but the defense, you know, I think in general was just kind of, it was like you, like we were talking about, they were everybody, both sides of the ball were just grinding it out and it was a, an exhausting game for them. Um, but it, yeah, great to see that they, everything's cleaned up and tight back there. For the most part. Mac, what did you think about the defense? Uh, other than the defensive line, I was impressed. Uh, the defensive line, we we know, is thin. Um, I don't. I'm not really concerned. I mean, I have concerns, but there's nothing that can address that right now. Um, other than trying to get young guys more experience and and having more able bodies to play. Uh, and Des played 28 snaps. Yeah. Shout out to to Desmond Watson uh, I noticed I when I saw him go out there and I was like he has been out there for a, a lot and uh, so props to him um, we need someone else to kind of emerge and play and you know be like hey you you have to play I mean that's uh, we we realized you know I, I talked about how Gervon Dexter seemed to get the whole defensive line seemed to get pushed around in the second half um, mm-hmm. and that was because, excuse me, that was because you had guys, you know, specifically, uh, Gervon Dexter played almost 70 plays. You should not play that many plays as, yeah. as a defensive tackle. I mean, uh, imagine, um, that 70 times in the style of game they, they were playing. It's not like they were playing, um, you know, they were passing quick passes the whole, you know, whole, whole game. They were running it at you. Um, yeah, physical. So, so it was it was tough, and you can't expect Gervon Dexter to be effective and and you know after play forty five fifty. I mean that's that's just not um, it's not natural. Um, I don't think any defensive tackle in the NFL plays sixty plus plays. I, I don't think that happens in the NFL. So and and they play a little slower of of you know they have damn near 40 they have 40 seconds between every play clock i think right don't they i think they have a they have a long ass play clock i mean they still have a 40 second play clock in college but um yeah i i that's my only concern i just think we need to develop some more depth along the interior defensive line um i was impressed with ventrell miller the secondary i think did did well they had some missed coverages um, but that's to be expected when there's some play action or the quarterback has the running threat that he, he has um, and, and he showed he could do. Um, that's, uh, you know, that's kind of you, – you, you live with those as long as they don't let them go for 100, you know, uh, 70 yards to the house. Yep. Uh, and the, the pass rush wasn't really there, but that was mostly because um, – well – could have been a depth issue, but it was probably more because Rising was getting the ball out pretty quick. Yeah, they were throwing the ball. The they were throwing the ball in like two seconds every time. Um, yeah, there were, not much you can do there. And there were a couple times we almost got there with four, uh, but we didn't have a spy put on, and um, we had seven guys in coverage, and he ran. He he broke through the pocket and and was able to run for 10, 15, 20, 30 yards. So that's yep. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, then the, the last two things I have is the special teams and the play calling. They kicked our ass on special teams. Um, that's just something that needs to get better. I don't know why they didn't call a, a fair catch almost all game. That uh, was kind of stupid. I didn't like the decision-making there. Uh, and the play calling, I thought the play calling was pretty good. Uh, the first quarter, well, there was a couple questionable uh, 
play calls, but you know, for the most part, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I don't know if you guys have anything else to say about either of those things. Yeah, I think as far as the special teams go, I was disappointed because there was a story that was done, or maybe Napier just had said um, during the week that he probably, like, I don't know how the quote was attributed, but it was essentially like he thinks about special teams and the team thinks about special teams more than any other team in the nation. And that did not show up on Saturday with, Correct. like you said, the not calling fair catches. I don't know why it doesn't matter. Like whether you think about special teams or not, they're gifting you the ball at the 25 yard line. If you call a fair catch on a kickoff. So just do that. But then yeah, don't take know, it out of the end zone. There's no reason. Yeah. Or well, don't, but don't take it out. Of, you can call a fair catch from the five and yeah. get it at the 25, you know, it's like, and, and the smart thing to do is kick it high and short and get your guys down there hoping that the the returner is is going to think he's going to bust the 100 yard you know uh return for the touchdown and then you've got them pinned at the 15 or the 20 and they're starting in negative field position so from that perspective that was disappointing the holding on like there was like a million plays that set back where we started on offense and then the punt game um i don't remember how many times we punted i know that for the most part they were pretty decent and then there was just that one where it was like yeah it was a 30 yard punt and then um they returned it another 15 um which was pretty frustrating but again i think the good thing about the this coaching staff that they seem to be on the ball about these things are bad and we're going to fix them we're not going to let them dwell for too long um and then as far as the play calling goes, it was just that one drive where they went three and out and it was kind of like, mm-hmm. uh, why, yeah, what are we doing here? Um, but it, other than that, it was like made sense. It, they, I, Florida did, like we said, and I think the cool thing about the game was that, and for both teams, but Florida did exactly what they wanted to do. They, yep. they executed their game plan. Um, and that was, that was cool to see. You got anything, Mac? Uh, not on special teams or any of that. I, I I was impressed with play calling. Special teams left a lot to be desired. So um, I think that's just something that will come with time. And uh, I think if they were returning it that much, I, I think the they must have seen something in the film and were told to return it if you catch it at this spot. I don't, I don't think it was a, a bad decision-making because I don't think you know, Billy would have been that stubborn to say, you know, if they didn't like what they were seeing, to say, not go say, hey, just fair catch it from now on. They must have seen something they liked and, and tried to exploit it. That's my my uh, position. Maybe so. I, uh, I know that they're going to have to perform better at special teams going forward, especially this weekend. We are back in the swamp Another 7 p.m. game. We're playing the SEC East team, uh, the Kentucky Wildcats, who are coming off a win over Miami of Ohio. It was uh, 37 to 13 last week. I think they played at 3:30. Was that yeah, right? 7:30 game. It was a 7:30. That was a nice game. Uh, yeah. So let's go into our Kentucky preview. Uh, like, like I said last last week, they won. Uh, it was ten to thirty seven final, but it was ten or it was thirteen to thirty seven final, but it was ten to thirteen UK at the half. So it was a it was a pretty close first half. They didn't play all that great, but uh, they kind of figured their shit out and uh, held Miami of Ohio to only three points in the second quarter. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's see. What do we think is what are we? Uh, looking forward to it we'll start with uh with the former kentuckian um doug dickey yeah yeah so uh, a little bit a little about me um my my dad and actually there my, my dad and my mom are going to come to the game my dad is originally from kentucky so i grew up in a split household uh he cheers for florida for the most part but of course when kentucky comes to town um he's only ever going to wear blue um so I kind of follow the the program a little bit more closely than some other people uh, have an interest in them. Um, Want to see them be successful, but of course this weekend 
I hope they don't score a damn point. And they go back to the Bluegrass State crying about, oh, when does basketball season start? Um, so with that being said, I think that the they are in a bad spot right now um, with some, some problems that they had uh, both off the field and then on the field in week one. Um, Chris Rodriguez is arguably their are their best uh, quarterback. I think he's the number one. And then Cavassier Smoke is like the number two. Their best uh, running back. Yeah, running back. Uh, both, uh, both are pretty good. Um, Chris Rodriguez, I think he's one of those, like he's pretty thick and hits the hole pretty hard and like a lot of yards after contact. Pause. Good running back. <laughs> What's that? Said pause. <laughs> Big gay. <laughs> but uh, – Anyhow, he's been suspended. It's undisclosed. And I think the interesting thing about this is that, like, the staff supposedly is – the coaching staff didn't make this decision to suspend him. It was the U.K. admin. So there's a little bit of tension here. And then there's, like, some guys um, – it was on the, the on three boards earlier today, some people talking about how, like, some of the, uh, the Kentucky media is talking about, like, just let the kid play. There's better ways to handle this. But I think it's because of a DUI that he had over the summer and then some other issues. Uh, they lost another remo- uh, uh, another running back in Jefferson who transferred from Sam Houston State, I think, um, it, to injury. And he is out indefinitely, I believe. Um, and then another running back was injured week one, and he but he's considered week to week. That's Juton McLean. Uh, and so as you can see, we're getting thin. So it's like this guy, uh, Lavelle Wright, uh, freshman, true freshman, will get some more reps. And then Cavassier Smoke, who stoops, claims that he loves what he saw from him, um, is are going to be the guys this weekend. Um, but they are – they have some problems as far as running back goes. And then they also – well, I guess as far as we'll keep it with the uh, theme of suspensions or players not, not being out there – uh, their star linebacker, Jordan Wright, has been kept from the depth chart. And Stoops, when he was asked about it in his confer- press conference, said that he has nothing to report, that he's trying to be as transparent as he can, like he always is. But he's been advised that there's layers to the situation and he's not allowed to comment on it. So some some bad things, some cracks happening uh, in the that foundation of what has always appeared to be a clean program in Lexington. Um yeah, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird that all these players are out and we have no idea why. Yeah, the the Matt Jones um, was tweeting so, so, something along those lines about how, like, you know, the administration seems to want to keep all this really quiet. But as and especially now that Florida is ranked 12 um, and I think Kentucky moved up or stayed in the same spot, but that it's a this it's a little bit of a bigger game, carries some weight to it that it, the national media is going to get, they're going to get some information out of there and we're going to figure out what's going on. And it could prove to be kind of detrimental to the team, depending on, you know, how bad it is. But, Fingers crossed. Yeah. The other, uh, the other thing I guess that happened this weekend with them was that the offensive line kind of was, they, they moved to play. I found they moved a player, a more experienced player over to left tackle. Um, they only allowed, they only got gained 50 yards on the ground might be because of that thinness at running back. Um, but Levis was also sacked four times um, by Miami of Ohio. Well, I mean, the juggernaut of Miami of Ohio, oh, yeah. um, probably better than that team to the South of us here, but uh, the real Miami. Yeah. The Miami, the Miami team to the, the South. No, the real Miami is Miami of Ohio. Oh yeah, yeah, the original Miami. Um, but I just think I'm pretty excited about this weekend. I think it's good. It'll be good to get back on track um, against them. It'll be a. Cl- I think it'll be a little bit of a closer game than we'd all want. But I, I, I think ultimately we're gonna beat their ass. <laughs> what do you got on this, Mac? Anything? Uh, you know, Kentucky is gonna be as long as they have Mark Stoops. They're always going to be a well-coached team. I don't think they're they're going to do much to lose the game. We're not going to see Joker Phillips, Kentucky, trotting out there and just, you know, getting beat sixty-three to nothing. I mean, it's it's not that's not going to happen. Um, but you know, we the Gators have still given Mark Stoops some solid ass whoopings, and um, 
the past few years. It's, it's, I think in the COVID year, we beat them pretty, pretty bad. Um, Luke Del Rio beat them like 45, nothing or 45, three. Or, yeah. Something stupid. That was um, there. No, that was here. Was, no, that was, was here. A, that was, yeah. That was and the, game. They, he won the game where nobody covered. That was the year before. At the, uh, in Lexington, nobody covered some guy with like no or, seconds left in the. Or no, that was the year after that. That was whenever uh, Frank's he replaced Frank's. Frank's was uh, got the start against uh, Michigan and then struggled, and then Frank started against Tennessee. Thought he was kind of good because he threw a hail mary, and then the next week is when um, they, they replaced. Yeah. yeah, they they went with uh, Del Rio over. Um, over Frank's or they replaced him late. So, um, but yeah, we, we've had a couple, you know, it, a couple close ones and we've had a couple where we've been on the right side of a blowout. Um, so I, I don't think it's going to be either of those results. Um, I think you're always going to get Kentucky's best shot. You know, this is their Super Bowl. They act like this is the biggest game of the year. I, I don't, um, I don't know why they, they if they focused on Florida as much as they or if they focused focus on Tennessee as much as they focus on Florida they might beat Tennessee I don't think they I think they're like one and nine in the last ten against Tennessee and there have been some bad um, Tennessee teams um, to say the least well yeah. this is that point in the season where all the Kentucky fans still have hope that they're gonna go. 11 and one and play for the East again. Same with Tennessee. And then that, that I think that's why it's always so big is that they go through Gainesville so early or go through Florida. I should say go through Florida so early. And then by the time they get to Tennessee, it's like they're already eight and four or, you know, they're on their way to eight and four, seven and five. And they just don't get, you know, they're ready. Basketball season is in full swing and they're ready to, they're ready to, they're, to, they're over it. Yeah ready to give up on the team. So um, I think that's the big reason, but. Well, uh, this year they have a, a, probably one of the better quarterbacks they've ever had there. We talked last week about Andre Woodson a little bit. Uh, and this is the, the, this is that level of quarterback. Uh, they're saying he's a potential top 10 pick, maybe the first quarterback taken. That's I mean, it is still early. So we, you know, it's all bullshit at this point. Um, the, Broadcasters, I listened to the, I watched the game earlier today, and uh, they compare his play style to Troy Aikman. Last week, he went for three, 303 yards, 21 of 32 passing, three touchdowns, and one interception. Pretty, uh, pretty solid opening game for them. Uh, he did have one, uh, the interception he had was a pretty bad one. It was in the second quarter in the corner of the end zone. And then um, they, the, then Miami of Ohio went three and out, and uh, my and Kentucky blocked the punt, so it, that that bailed them out. But they only netted three points from that whole. Uh, Kentucky only netted three points from that whole thing. Um, he's going to be good. He's going to be an issue, um, but I don't really. I mean, oh, well, honestly, he might be the best quarterback we play this year, um, but we'll see that the. the uh, Tavion Robinson also is a wide receiver they have. He's a Virginia Tech transfer. He had uh, two 40-plus yard receptions and uh, 103 yards after the catch. And uh, he ended up with six total catches for 136 yards. Um, so that's going to be a test for our secondary. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw Jason Marshall playing press on him all game. Um, yeah, and they, they use the, uh, the, t- the tight ends quite a bit. In the um, well, they didn't in week one, but they typically use the tight ends, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw plenty of tight end uh, pass catching this weekend, especially considering the success that Utah had against us. Um, what do you expect to see out of the Kentucky offense, either one of you? I th- I think they're they're still going to try to um, run the ball. That's still you know, they, I think they still had something like 25 or 30 attempts in last week and they still, and they only ran for 
what 70 yards as a team or 60, 60 yards. yards yeah so they're still gonna they're gonna try to establish it um i i i think they're they could abandon it quick and try to throw it if that if they're not getting much success um i could also see them trying to run the ball late in the game because of our depth issues i could see them trying to do that so ideally the best scenario for florida to prevail over um what we're gonna see from them is is they're gonna you know we need to try to um, force them to pe- throw the ball and get a get a comfortable lead I think where they can't exploit our our interior depth because if we, you know that's gonna be our struggle this season if these games are close late where teams can run the ball still um, we're gonna be tired and and it's it's gonna you know, they're still going to do that. But if we're up 17 in the fourth quarter, you can't, you know, take a, a 12 play 60, you know, 70 yard drive. And um, that eats six minutes off the clock. You can't afford to do that, um, especially with how good we can run the ball. So I, I think we're going to, we're going to see them still try to establish some semblance of a run game. And then, um, um, if they can't, they'll be happy. You know, they'll be fine if they can't run the ball because they have a, you know, they think they have an all-world quarterback. So, yeah, they like their quarterback. Yeah, I don't know what their uh, they were averaging nine nine and a half yards um, per attempt on with passing, but only like one uh, one point nine yards attempt per attempt on the ground. So, and that from that perspective, I get the potential of them maybe trying to run it late or whatever. I just, I don't know. I like, I, I, you worry about Kentucky giving your best shot, but with the fact that like, like Miami of Ohio was getting four sacks, what is Will Levis going to be able to do? And, and how often is he going to be able to get the ball to his playmakers against, you know, he's not, he's, he's good. He, I don't, think he can run quite like cam rising can as far as quickness he's a lot bigger i think um so that makes him a little bit harder to get to the ground if you get to him but then again you know he's sacked four times by miami of ohio uh and we've we have to have even with our woes at defensive line we have to have a better defensive line than that um i just think that you know as long as the you limit some of those like you were saying with the tight end, some of those plays over the middle where Bernie was kind of getting beat um, and the secondary was having to make the the uh, the tackles on those guys, I, then I think it'll be – we should be able to control it pretty well. Um, yeah, well, let's look at the defense. Um, so Kentucky defense, uh, the third, third quarter they, were, they recovered a fumble in the, in the red zone. Uh, the third quarter was, was big in this game. Uh, they opened up the third quarter with a uh, a kick return touchdown and followed by a recovered fumble in the red zone. So that was 14 quick points that brought them out to 26 to or uh, I'm sorry 27 to 10. And from there it was it was all Wildcats. Um, let's see that uh, yeah like like we said their their star linebacker Jordan Wright. Miss week one. He's not listed on the depth chart. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it, they always have a pretty good defense. Um, they, you know, it's going to be tough, but I mean, they have the, uh, the disadvantage of having to defend Anthony Richardson and uh, talent all over the field. We, we, like we said earlier, offensive line looked excellent. They were, were getting push. And they were protecting really well, so um, it, unless they can unless they can really disrupt our offensive line, then I think that I like our odds, um, especially with uh, Anthony Richardson being able to make a play if the if the play goes broke. Yeah, I think there, you know, you have like I'm pretty sure his name is DeAndre Square as one of their. Is he a linebacker? I think. Um, yeah, he's a linebacker. He's he's one of their staples. They lost Josh Pascal at the end of last year um, to the NFL. 
Uh, I don't really know too much about some of the other players. I don't really recognize any of their names. So, you know, they had three sacks, but again, they're sacking. I don't, unless I'm, I'm missing something. Here. I don't Blaine, think, Gra- Blaine Gabbard's brother. Yeah. I don't think that they have the, uh, the genetic uh, athleticism that Anthony Richardson has. The dude is just an absolute freak. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, again, I think the common theme here is just they're going to give their best shot. They, they, You've got on here that Stoops is looking to surpass Bear Bryant uh, in the school records or the, the, the coach coach record for wins at the school at 61. Um, that's a big deal for him that, you know, Bear Bryant won an SEC championship in the 60s when he was at Kentucky, and obviously we know he was a great coach. And I don't know how, you know, that it's a different time now, but uh, that's a big deal. They're going to want to try to win for that, but they've got, you know, 10 other games to try and do that this season too. So try again after this week, because I just don't, I don't see a path of victory. Maybe if they had those other players that they're missing, even then, I just think, especially with that, the, the, the more discipline that Florida has and that that no quit that they have and sort of a little bit of killer instinct, which I'd like to see of a little bit. Yeah, the toughness is a good word for it. Um, not killer instinct yet, but that I just don't see. A, and then, dude, it's our, and it's sold out again. Like we're going to be going absolutely nuts for two weeks in a row. Yep. And it's just, yeah, they, somebody, you know, they, it took, they, it took a blocked, field goal return for a touchdown and a a broken or a play that nobody wanted to tackle on a screenplay that nobody wanted to tackle on with their best receiver. Who's also no longer there for them to beat us last year. And we were playing the most 15 false starts. Yeah. Most vanilla play calling 15 false starts. Like just the coaching staff appeared to have quit after the Alabama loss. And that's what it took for them to beat us last year. And I think that, we're in a talent where the same talent, better discipline, better coaching. I don't see a path to victory for them. Could be wrong, but I, I don't think so. What do you got, Mac? Yeah, I, I don't, uh, you know, again, they're going to be disciplined. They're going to be well coached. I think they're going to be on the defensive side of the ball. I think they're going to be a little faster than what we saw from Utah. I don't necessarily know if they're, they're going to be as physical as what Utah was. Um, so maybe we don't have a 45 yard run for a touchdown from Anthony Richardson. Um, I think the play calling is going to be different for us against our defense. I think we're going to, um, I think you're going to see us try to take some shots, excuse me, early and, uh, you know, try to stretch the field or, or, or at least take that attempt. Uh, I think they're, you know, I don't know much about their defense, but I, I, um, if our offensive line played that good last week against, um, a relatively uh, strong defensive front in Utah, I, I have no reason to believe we're not going to play well enough to effectively run the ball. And if we can effectively yeah. run the ball, we're going to win a lot of football games this year. And I think that's no different. I think, I think Kentucky and Utah are the same type of team, you know, uh, executing and playing well, but not maybe not the most talented uh, team that you're going to see. So I, I I like how we played against Utah, and if we if we duplicate that effort, then I I think that we're going to have that we're going to be two and out, which is good. I um I last week one of the uh, underrated parts of that performance in the swamp, besides getting a huge win, uh, was that all of the recruits that were there got to see the swamp at its best. Uh, I think we can all agree that it was, I mean, one of the best environments that we've seen in, in probably a couple of years, maybe since like, maybe since Alabama last year and Auburn in 19. Um, and we're going to have a whole slew of recruits come back this week. Um, we have a five-star quarterback for the 2024 class, DJ Lagway. He's a big guy. He would be um, a, a great get for us. Our guy, uh, Trayon Webb, four-star out of um, out of Jacksonville. Um, he's a running back. 
He's been recruiting uh, recruiting guys left and right. He's one of my probably my favorite recruit this year that we have, just based on you know him being a team guy. Uh, and we have an LSU commit, Tavion Galloway. Um, he's a 2024 tight end, and he's a four star. So uh, he's going to come check us out, and um, hopefully we can swing him over from LSU. But uh, there's no recruit more important than five star. Uh, I think he's a D tackle, Keon Keeley. He's a 2023 D line commit, um, but he he was committed to Notre Dame. He's he's, currently he's not a, a commit. He's not a commit. He's a DL D line commit. <coughs> he was not. He's not a commit. He's uh, yeah. he was a Notre Dame commit, uh, and he's currently a Bama lean. Twenty four seven has him like leaning seventy percent towards Bama, but uh, just today. He went and changed. He was coming this weekend, and it was going to be a official visit. But now it's an unofficial visit because he wants to visit possibly again. So that's all good news for us. Um, yeah, Mac, do you uh, do you got any insight on any of these uh, recruits? Um, Keeley is going to be a tough one to pull. Uh, you just. I've been in the position, the longer it goes, the better it is for Florida, though, because he was on flip watch the second he decommitted from Notre Dame to, you know, they were, they thought he was going to flip straight to Alabama. So the longer it goes with him not not committing to Alabama, I think the better. Apparently, this was supposed to be an official visit. Um, I've, I've heard, which Florida's plan was to have all official visitors during LSU, week during the season that's the only week they wanted to have official visitors um but i think they uh i think what they're gonna do they if they convince him to unofficially visit to push that official visit to the week of lsu and if that is the case um i think he is officially visiting i could be wrong he has he has an official visit somewhere he's he already used one to notre dame I think he's going to, um, I want to say Ohio State, um, because that's where he was. This he actually this weekend might have been an official visit for Ohio State. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, he met Um, uh, LeBron there. So if he is, um, his schedule, the way he he released his official visit schedule, or told reporters, and his last official visit was supposed to be like October seventh at Alabama the or eighth, whenever that weekend is. And we convinced him to have his official visit on the 15th, which means we would potentially have the last official visit, which is, um, which is big. And if we could, and we're getting him on a campus two times in a span of a a month and a half. um, If we can convince him to take unofficial visit and then an official visit for the LSU game. So yeah, and I, I like. Him, you can't tell me shit. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, it'll be reckless out here. If, if we yeah. pull him, he could he could really bring the class into the top five. Uh, him and uh, Cormani, and uh, Cormani was there last weekend. Cormani McLean, and um, he crystal balled immediately after the game. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how you could be at that game and not believe in Florida. You know, I mean, that was just. I mean, what a night that was. So, um, and Trayon is coming back and. We know that he's been hot on the trail getting guys to commit. Actually, he got his quarterback uh, at, his, at his high school to commit. So, And uh, when Keeley first became uh, – when he first decommitted from Notre Dame, everybody was telling Trayon to go recruit him, and Trayon said, nah, he's a Bama lock, but not so – not looking so locked up anymore. So we'll see how I that th- goes. I think that was a, a joke. Uh, he made that a – you know, he was, he was sarcastic, like, oh, yeah, he's a Bama lock. And, you know, because he called someone else that ended up committing to Florida. He called them a lock um, to somewhere else, and then they committed to Florida. So it's kind of like his – or I actually, it might have been either he – I think he was a Penn State lock or something like that or, or something. It was like a callback to whenever someone said he was a Penn State lock. <laughs> um when he committed and then he committed to Florida. Oh, okay. Well, why not Florida? Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Well, let's, let's move on to uh, matchups to watch. Uh, I have down here, 
we'll just kind of cruise through these and then we'll do the uh, final score predictions. Uh, you're you're going to want uh, one of the, the main matchups is going to be the Florida linebackers on the Kentucky tight ends. Like I said earlier, Kentucky has a, a pretty good tight end room. They've been bragging about them all off season. They didn't really use them last week, but uh, our line, our linebackers uh, tend to, tended to struggle last week against Utah's tight ends in the passing game, so they're going to have to make strides if uh, they want to contain these tight ends. Um, the UK all O line versus the UF D line. This is kind of weakness on weakness. I don't think Florida has uh, necessarily a weak defensive line, but that certainly uh, lacks depth. Um, Kentucky's tr- allowed four sacks last week versus Miami of Ohio. So we'll see if, if our D line can get the push and, um, you know, contain the run game and get af- after Will Levis. Um, then I have Florida's defensive backs versus the wide receivers. Um, I had Tavion Robinson, the UK receiver. You know, he had a big game last week. So it, it's going to be on. Uh, you know, Torrance and Marshall and all those guys and Helm to uh, try and contain him. And then the special teams battle. The special teams last week for Florida was uh, kind of suspect at best, and they're going to need to play a lot better and call a lot more fair catches if they're going to try to contain uh, Kentucky, who had uh, 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 some a lot of return yards. I think they had uh, two or three big returns. And... Um, a return touchdown. So let's uh, let's go into the final score predictions. We'll start with uh, with Doug. How, what do you what do you expect the uh, the end of this game to look like? For... Well, you know, like I said, I started this show off. I like to see Kentucky succeed, um, but let's be fucking real here, boys, for a minute. Uh, no Wandell Robinson. Check me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's true. He's gone. Yep. Uh, Will Levis against like. Power five teams, same stats as Emory Jones, almost identical. Uh, check me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was floating around on Twitter. Uh, they allowed four sacks against Miami of Ohio. Didn't even, I forgot that that school existed. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, they, they returned a kick for a touchdown against Miami of Ohio. Great, cool. They have none of their running backs. They don't have their star linebacker. The basketball team just unveiled new basketball uniforms that don't have checkerboard on them. And if I don't, you know, nobody outside of Kentucky probably knows this, but Kentucky fans hated the checkerboard. So now they're all excited about that. They're already looking forward to basketball season and getting in their new their new threads. They have completely looked past the Florida Gators. Everybody says that Gainesville sucks. They, they don't want to go to Gainesville this year. We all want to go to Oxford because they've only sold like 1,500 tickets. I thought... Here I was my whole life being told by little old hillbilly dad of mine that Kentucky fans travel everywhere and everybody hates it. But they've only sold 1,500 tickets when the nice people out there in Utah, which is way fucking further across the country than Kentucky is, brought 10,000 people. And granted, they probably made about as much noise as 1,500 Kentucky fans would do. Would, but <laughs> they didn't make a piece. Regardless, regardless, regardless. The reality here is there is no path to victory for the Kentucky Kitty Cats. We will be stomping them into the dirt because it's the swamp and only Gators get out alive. Uh, Florida, 76 to 10. (laughs) All right, Mac, who do you like? Uh, I like the Gators, uh, clearly. Um, I think, you know, I've painted the picture quite well. I think our... You know, we have the be- we'll have the better quarterback on the field. Um, I think we'll be able to get to their quarterback. Uh, finally, I think we'll see a pass rush this week. If they have the inability to run the ball, I think um, that only bodes well for for us. I think they might run okay, um, but I think I think we get up early, force them into some passing situations um, where it's obvious passing downs, obvious. Uh, you know, they, they, they're going to play from behind. I like Florida to win this one. Let's see here. I'll go 
to 21 is going to be the final score. I, I actually, 21. Yep, 38 21. And I think we'll be up, like, it'll be, you know, at one point in time, it might be 38, you know, 14, and they might score something late. Some garbage shit. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I think I'm going to go a little bit closer than you. I think uh, Kentucky's best. Uh, best unit is their defense. Um, I think they're going to hold us to under 30, but not by much. But uh, I think that I like our defense to bend, not break. And I don't think that they're going to get into the mid-20s. So I like Gators 27, Kentucky 17, we'll say. All right, well, that uh, brings us to the end of, of uh, Work em Silly. I uh, can't wait to, to see you all again at the Swamp this weekend. We're going to kick Kentucky's ass. They have no shot, and um, we're going to run it up on them. They are for Heisman, 17-4. Woo!